Hi guys, myself Ashok, working as a Java consultant. Today I'm going to discuss one of the very important concept that is called log4j. Now, as part of this session, we are going to understand what is logging and why we should not use system.out.println in the applications and what is the introduction for the log4j, what are the advantages and disadvantages of log4j and what are the main components in the log4j and how to configure log4j in the project several examples using log4j and very very important concept monitoring the real-time logs by using some tools like WinSCP, Putty and Splunk so this is our agenda for this class now let's move on first what is logging Logging is the process of writing log messages during the execution of a program to a central place. That means uh, we are developing so many applications now. When the application is executing, we want to store the application execution status in one central place so that in future we can monitor that and we can analyze how that application is getting executed. Our when the application is executing some exceptions may occur and we need to understand why that exception got occurred when that exception got occurred so if you want to do this kind of analysis we need to log application messages in some central location and uh, why when we are doing this coding part uh, we can write the system.out.println uh, to track those messages in the console right but why we need to go for this logging mainly this logging will help us uh, in understanding the exceptions when uh, applications are deployed in the higher environments like SIT environment, UAT, pilot and production if application is there in the local machine we can use the debugging mechanism to understand where is the problem and why that problem is occurring. But uh, once the development and unit testing is completed, the application will be promoted to higher environments like SIT or UAT and pilot and production. At that time, source code will not be available in our system. Application is executing another computer. Now, in that application, suppose in the UAT environment, one exception got occurred. Now developer has to identify at what time that exception occurred and what is the root cause of that exception then only he can fix that exception. So we need to store that application messages into some location. So how to store those messages into some location that's where we will go for this log4j API or log4j framework. Now first see generally people are going to use uh, system.out.println like this to print method execution got started method execution got ended get uh, start first line of that method and last line of the method when this method is getting executed these statements will be printed on the console that is a very dangerous problem so application messages should not be printed on the console so I, we should never use this SOP statements like this to print application execution status we have to avoid why we need to avoid this system.out.println uh, why we need to avoid this system.out.println's because there are several drawbacks of this system.out.println's what are those drawbacks uh, the first drawback these SOP statements are going to print on the console those are temporary messages only by mistake if I close my console there is no way to get those messages back so SOP statement will generate only temporary messages we cannot store those messages into one permanent place so and these SOP statements are going to print like single threaded environment model. Fine. To overcome the drawbacks of these SOP statements, we are going to use this log4j framework which was provided by Apache organization. Now, so the conclusion, we should not use system.out.println in the project to print the log messages because they are temporary messages and they are not going to store into permanent place and they are going to execute in single threaded environment. To avoid the problems of this SOP statements, log4j framework came into picture and it is an open source framework 
provided by Apache mainly for Java projects. Now, so as we discussed that Log4j is a open source framework given by Apache to perform logging for Java applications. This Log4j is reliable, fast and flexible logging frameworks written in Java which is distributed under Apache software license. This Log4j is one of the API available among several logging frameworks available for Java. Now, so what are the advantages of going for this logging and what are the disadvantages of this logging? Uh, logging is an important component of this software development and well-written logging code offers quick debugging and easy maintenance of the application. That means if your application is having this logging mechanism, easily we can debug the issues in the higher environment and the maintenance of the project will become very simple. Fine. If this logging is not available for that project, when that exception got occurred, which method, which line is giving that exception, developer cannot identify very easily. So the main advantage of this logging to debug and to make the developer's life simple as part of the maintenance of the project. Out of this advantage, there is a disadvantage also of this log for j that is as we are writing the messages to external location, it is going to slow down performance of the application. But when we compare this advantage and disadvantages, advantages are dominating the disadvantages. So that's why every project is going to use this log for j in the real time environment. Fine. Now let's enter into the architecture part of the log4j, how many components are going to be available and what is the role of each component. Log4j framework having three main components, they are called logger, appender and layout. Logger is responsible for capturing logging information and appenders are responsible for publishing logging information to various preferred destinations like file or console our database, our email. Now, the layout is going to represent formatting of that log message. Suppose I want a log message with particular date, when that message is going to print, what is the class name, what is the method name, what is the line number. That information I want as part of that log message. That we can manage by using this layout. So three main components, logger, appender and layout. Logger responsible for capturing logging information, appender responsible for publishing that log message to given location or destination and layouts responsible for formatting logging information in different styles based on user choice. We can manage these log messages. I hope you got the three components in the high level, logger, appender, layout. In future slides, in the next slide, coming slides, we are going to see more details about these three components of the log4j. Working with log4j, nothing but going to use these three components to generate the log messages. We'll see in very detail. Now, overview architecture, we can see that logger object, layout object and appender. Logger is used to generate the message, layout which is used to write the message to the given destination and layout sorry layout is going to format that message appender which is going to write to destination that destination can be a file or console or email or database or java messaging service also so these are the three main components are going to work in the logging now so same thing we are giving here what is a logger logger is a class in the given package we have to initialize one logger object for each java class Suppose my application is having 100 Java classes, I want to perform logging in all the 100 classes. So for every Java class, we need to initialize one logger object. Based on that object, we are going to generate those log messages. Why we need to initialize this logger for each Java class? This logger object is going to provide factory methods to generate the log messages. Now, what is the syntax we need to use to get this logger? So this is the line we are going to write in every Java class to get the logger object for that class. This is called initializing the logger in the class. Logger dot get logger current class name. Now we are going to store into one variable called logger. Now, so this is the syntax to 
get the logger object in every java class for one java class one logger we are going to initialize see the sample here we are have a class called report generator in this class i am writing some sample methods here for this class i want to perform logging so the first step we need to initialize the logger object for this class so same thing we are doing here logger dot get logger current class we are storing into one logger variable by using this logger variable we can call the methods to write the messages into destinations no so when i am going to write the messages here we need to follow some levels what type of message you need to write like debug or info one error fatal and some methods or uh, some log levels are available for every level appropriate corresponding method provided by the logger class if i want to generate a debug message there will be a method called debug same thing for info one error and fatal also that means logger class providing some methods for us to generate the log messages those methods are available for all the levels these are called logging levels sir so which level i need to use here that depends on the functionality we are working on some people sometimes a method will use all the levels as well based on the requirement we will see what level we need to use in which situation but high level all all levels including custom levels debug designates fine grained informational events that are most useful to debug an application so if you want to use most information to write on the log file then we will use the debug level that means there is a method for this level from the logger class similarly info level designates informational messages that highlight the progress of the application at coarse grain level suppose if i want to print if i want to generate high level messages of a method then i will use info level that means info method one level designates potential harmful situations suppose when i am trying to read some properties file that file is not available so i am going to want that property file is not there for that we will use one level for that one method will be available similarly error error level designates error events that might still allow the application to continue running for that we can go for error level error method will be there fatal uh, designates very severe error events that will presumably lead the application to abort suppose i am trying to open a database connection to perform some operation but the database server is down i am not able to get that connection then i cannot continue with that application execution that is a very blocker issue that blocker we will represent by using fatal level that provided fatal method for us next one off i want i want to switch off this logging for this application at this point of time then we will set the level as a off uh, so these are methods are we can say levels of the logging so i'm repeating once again debug info one error fatal fatal is used when you are not able to continue the execution that is a blocker error critical situation some functionality not working but we can continue with the application execution in the other modules then we can use error and some any harmful situation some files are missing then we will use one level if you want to print high level information method started method ended then we can use info level if you want to print each and every state of that application then we can go for debug level so other also we need to remember all debug info one error and fatal the last stage of i am going to switch off the logging fine next how does these log levels are going to work suppose when i am using this uh, logging i need to choose one level of the logging if i choose the level as a all all the levels are going to execute they are going to write the messages to the destination first suppose if i set the level as a debug from the debug or higher levels are going to execute so if i set the level to debug debug message will will store in the destination info messages one messages error and fatal messages also suppose if i set the level as a on only one error fatal will be stored if i set as a error error and higher level to that error and fatal is going to store in the destination that is what the level of the log a log request of level p in a logger with level q is enabled if p greater than or equal to q 
this rule is at heart of the log for j that means whatever the level we are setting from that level all the higher levels are going to execute fine if i set the level as a fatal fatal is the highest level only the fatal messages are going to execute if i set the level as a info from info higher levels these are info one error and fatal are going to execute this is one important thing that everybody should remember level when we set a level for the logging from that level all the higher level messages are going to store in the destination if you want to print all the levels set the level as all if you want to stop the logging set the level as off this is called log level order next if i set the level as a trace trace level all are going to print that means trace debug info one error factor will print if i set level as a debug from the debug all the higher levels are going to execute if i set info from info higher levels if i set as a one from one the remaining higher levels same thing for error if i set error error higher is fatal so error at fatal will print if i set as a fatal only fatal because fatal is the last level if i set all all levels are going to print if i set off nothing is going to print so the log level order is very very important everybody should know when we are working with the log mechanism or logging based on the level that it is going to decide what messages has to be stored in the destination to stop the levels we need to use off to enable all levels we will use all only to print critical errors critical critical messages and blocker messages level to set the level to error then error and fatal is going to print i hope you got clarity what is this log level so high level debug info one error fatal whatever the level you are setting from that level all the higher levels are going to print Fine. next what is a appender just now we have seen what is logger logger we need to initialize for every java class which provided methods to generate the log messages now where we are going to store that message that depends on the appender we are going to choose appenders are used to write messages into a file or a console or a database or a email for that it has provided different different classes for us they are console appender to write the message to the console file appender to write the message to your file to write the message to database we have a jdbc appender to send the message to a mail we have smtp appender so appenders are used to write messages into destination that destination can be a file or a console or a database table can i use multiple appenders at a time messages i want to store into console as well as in the file yes that is possible the combination of appenders also we can use we will see that as well the last component that is layout this layout defines formatting of a message how you want to print a message in the file in the log file or in the console i want to print the current date i want to print the class name method name line number so those things we can manage that by using this layout concept so three high level components logger appender layout logger providing methods for us to generate the log messages based on the levels appender to write the messages to destination like console file or database layout used to define formatting in which logs will print in a repository that is a destination what type of messages we want to print what values you want to means print in that message for that it provided different different layouts for us there are pattern layout simple layout xml layout and html layout etc uh next thing plugging in the log for j into project so how i need to plug in my log for j framework into my application to perform this log mechanism 